and uh, welcome to you, Wayne. Oh, uh, hello. Hi, uh, welcome on stage. Uh, we're delighted to have you. Uh, Wayne is with Applied Materials, and uh, he'll be telling us about, yeah, um, sort of taking semiconductor techniques and uh, and methods to AR VR optics. So the stage is yours again. If we feel like you're overrunning, we will intervene a few minutes before. Otherwise, yeah, enjoy your presentation. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, so, yeah, I'm with Applied Materials, and um, yeah, we'll give you a talk here. So, if we maybe move to the to the next slide here. Actually, I, I, you can move it yourself. So there is. Okay, a, I will do that. Or the forward, you can click on that. It's easier. I can move it for you, but it's easier if you click on your end. Okay, I will do that. So, quick intro on Applied Materials. So. Applied Materials is, is the number one equipment supplier for the semiconductor and display industry. So we make and, and ship, install, support thousands of tools every year uh, that, we, that we build and ship. So you can see here, it's, it's quite a big company and uh, it's a very much a, a materials engineering company. So we're, we're a nanomaterials company. Uh, we often say that it's uh, atomic level materials engineering on an industrial scale. So, so that, that's really what we do. Um, and what we uh, try to do to, uh, to move forward here, I'm gonna jump on over here, for, um, for the photonic space is take all of those years of experience that we have in electronics with semiconductor where we, uh, you know, we, every chip that, that you use in your phone, et cetera, et cetera, is touched by applied materials. Bring all of that expertise and apply that to the, uh, to the photonics area, uh, which you see on the bottom left there. So we're able to leverage all of that experience in equipment, uh, materials, and then apply it to, to the photonics arena. Uh, we believe that this will be a big new uh, platform a big new growth area for a new industry in deep sub wavelength uh, optics and photonics. And, and we want to enable that and, and bring that to scale by leveraging our expertise, expertise in, in equipment, in materials, in metrology and process, and build on the you know, very mature equipment platforms that we have, which in semiconductor are all 300 millimeter scale, um, and uh, so we get a lot of devices on, on each wafer and that can help us with ultimately with the cost um, and the yield and the ability to scale. So, so that, that's what we do big picture. Um, as we build this out, augmented reality wave guides are, are one kind of product we can make. So I'll jump back to this slide here. So what, what we see um, overall, um, what we plotted here was the different kinds of uh, AR and smart glasses that have been introduced over over the last you know uh, period of time. And what we're seeing is that the form factor is getting better here towards the bottom right. We're seeing things that are starting to look more like glasses. Um, obviously, there was the recent Apple announcement of this uh, video pass-through headset. Uh, that doesn't look like glasses. Uh, it looks looks more like a VR headset, uh, but that that was very interesting. Doesn't have a normal see through display like the glasses we see at the bottom here. Uh, we're more focused on the on the ones that really look like glasses. And uh, the key thing that we see to really enable uh, glasses is that they need to be useful. So, given that the waveguide is the part that we produce. Uh, you know, it needs to have good image quality. You need to be able to read the text. You need nice colors so that you can provide useful information to people. Uh, it needs to be wearable, which means it needs to really look like glasses um, so that people feel comfortable wearing it. The technology should be invisible so you can't really see it. It just looks like glasses. Uh, that's the second important thing. Uh, the third thing is that we want people to wear it all day. So that means it needs to be uh, efficient to keep the battery life up um, and it needs to be uh, thin and lightweight so it's not too heavy. Uh, so those things are very important. And lastly, it needs to be available. So that means you need to have very 
scalable technologies that 